Cut this gal again. I'm back for a second vlog today because the first one was all facts and figures about food and stuff and this second one is really much about much deeper more profound issues that come up in HCG that I really think need to be talked about and I really love talking about so I'm going to. The first is emotional eating which is something that a lot of us are talking about on HCG because I really believe HCG especially phase two but also phase three is a wonderful opportunity for us to really get clear on what are the drivers for eating. Because let's face it, we're not hungry. So hunger is not motivating our food choices. So if we have the urge to eat when we're not hungry, there's something else driving it because there's no hunger. So what's driving it? What's driving it? And I've identified for me some things driving it, which is habits of sitting in front of the TV and eating, which come from my childhood when I used to sit with my dad because he was a bit lonely and we'd all eat together at night. You know, um, things like that. So I really encourage you, if you haven't already looked into this, start to notice when you want to eat, you're not hungry. So what's really causing it? Is it loneliness? Is it trying to fill yourself with nurturing or nourishment? And I was listening to an amazing meditation today from an amazing teacher of mine called Cass Phelps in, in LA, Los Angeles. And at the start he had a Q&A and somehow, I don't know why, but the topic of emotional eating came up. And he said some amazing points about it. He said that usually when we're taking in food, comfort food, you know, comfort food, junk food, yummy food that we don't need because we're not hungry, that our body doesn't want and in actual fact it's toxic for us because it's full of sugar and toxic addictive chemicals like sugar that are totally manufactured and not designed for the human body by nature that cause all sorts of chemical reactions in us and end up with cancer and obesity and all sorts of things. You know, why do we put those into our body? Because we think of them as comfort food. Why do we need comfort food? And he really talked about how when we are not nurturing ourselves, then we look to something external to nurture us. So, for example, if you're living your life path and following your passion and do what you're doing what you're here to do on this planet, then you're brimming with energy. You're full of love. You're full of self-love. You don't need nurturing from food because you're nurturing yourself with your passion, with your calling. But most of us aren't doing what we're here to do. We're not following our passion. We're doing what we think we should do to please other people or what we think we should do for financial security or what we think we should do to fit into society. And so there's a big gaping hole inside many people. And that hole is trying to be stuffed and assuaged with food or with gambling or with drugs or with, you know, sex addiction. Or There's many, many kinds of addictions people are using to fill that hole. Food is only one of them. But it's the one that we use, we HCG dieters. Probably all of us have that in common, that we have used food to comfort ourselves. And so a really good thing to look at is, is to really look deeply at what am I here to do on this planet? You know, What is my calling? How could I give myself more sense of fulfillment in my life so I feel fulfilled? I feel filled. I don't feel empty. Fulfilled means filled. Yeah, but I don't need food. Another really interesting one he talked about was how we often, especially women, give a lot. We give to our families, we give to our partners, we give to our communities, we give to the planet. And often we give in a way that doesn't replenish our energy. So at the end of giving, we feel drained. Yeah? And so when we feel drained, we then need something to give us some nourishment. So we've given all this nourishment to others, we didn't get anything back, we gave it in a way that was not really respecting to ourselves because it was one way. And so at the end of the day we're exhausted and we need something to fill us up, to nourish us. So many of us turn to food. And so if we can start to learn to give in a way that is reciprocal, that's respectful of our time and energy, learn to set boundaries, to give when it feels right and say no when it feels wrong, to only give as much as we actually have to give, not extra beyond and above what we have, and to find ways to replenish our energy, you know, being in nature or listening to music we love or eating nourishing food or spending time with loved ones or doing arts and crafts that we love. We can find a way to do things that energize us, that fill us with juice, that fill us with love, you know, and then we have lots to give. But if we're just giving, 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 giving and never taking the time to energize ourselves and make ourselves juicy, then we get really exhausted giving. And so um, it's a reason why we eat. We're trying to get some love back. And if no one will give us love, chocolate will give us love. <laughs> as simple as that. So I just think they're really useful things to look at. You know, how can we nourish ourselves in healthy ways 
How can we be respectful of our, own, of our own energy? How can we set boundaries around our time and our giving so that we're not drained and then we don't need to turn to food to energize us because we're already energized? So they're two really good points. What was interesting was hearing Cass talk about this really reminded me of something else that's been really key to my HCG campaign and I haven't yet shared in the vlog, which is crazy because it's fundamental to everything I'm doing. But the thing that I haven't shared is that um, when I started doing this, you know, I think I'm going to take my glasses off because I don't need them. I'm not reading anything. It's silly. Anyway, when I was doing uh, the loading, the disgusting loading phase, <laughs> I was driving in my car on a two-hour drive and I just had, you know, on one on the passenger seat, I had like cheese, I had croissants, I had Ferrero Rocher, the most highest fat, nutty chocolate you can have. Um, I had cheesels, which is like Australian cheesy, twisty cracker things. Um, look, you know, like, like potato chips, but made of cheese. Totally disgusting. And I was eating all of them uh, like that. And I was feeling sick as, because I don't normally eat junk food, so I was just like, <laughs> I was trying to get it down. Anyway, while I was eating that and driving, I decided to flick through my iPod, because I had this long drive, and see if there was anything related to weight loss on my iPod that would inspire me. Anyway, by a complete and utter miracle, there was this track I downloaded years ago and I'd never listened to, a motivational track about how to find the deep inner motivation for weight loss. And she's developed this thing called Never Ending Motivation. And basically what she says is, if you really want to lose weight and get healthy and keep it off, it's irrelevant what diet, what program you do, the bottom line is you have to have the inner motivation. If you don't, then the second you finish the diet, you'll just put all the weight back on because you go back to all your old habits and you won't really have changed anything. But if you have really deep inner motivation, then that's enough to keep you eating healthily for the rest of your life because you're motivated to do that. And she gives this analogy, which is really, really powerful. She says, if you were standing on the ground and there was this big wide plank, like a two by four plank, and you had to cross the plank to, you know, the other side of the plank, you'd, you'd walk across it, no problem. If you lifted that plank up to 10 feet in the air and you had to walk across that plank, yeah, you might be a little bit scared looking down, but you'd probably walk across the plank. But if you lifted that plank up to the top of a, you know, 35-story building and that plank was going between one 35-story building and another 35-story building, oh, is my beautiful pussycat? You know, would you walk across the plank 35 stories up in the air no, you absolutely would not. You just wouldn't. You'd be crazy. You'd fall off. Most people have a fear of heights and you wouldn't walk across it. But she said, what if on the other building, on the other side of the plank, your child is in there or your mother or someone you really love and that building is on fire? Then would you walk across that plank? And it's like, oh my God, I would run across the plank. I wouldn't even think about it. I'd run across the plank and get my child or my mother. And she says, that's never-ending motivation. When you can find something like that that's driving you, you'll run across planks, you'll follow diets, you'll go to the gym, you'll eat healthily. It's a no-brainer. But you've got to find what yours is. Because if you think your motivation is just to look good or be slim or wear nice clothes, that's not a deep motivation. There's got to be something under that that's really, really deep. And I was driving along thinking, what's my never-ending motivation? And I started thinking about the people who really inspire me. And I started thinking about the people in my life who I really admire. I've got a spiritual teacher called Keith Mason who, in New Zealand who's amazing. He's very wise and very present, incredibly lighthearted and funny and just spot on with clarity about everything. I was thinking about him. I was thinking about my Feldenkrais trainer, Alan Questel, who's just incredibly funny, incredibly wise, charismatic, very loving, deeply listens to everyone and can hold a space for hundreds of people to learn powerfully. He's one of my heroes. I was thinking about Lynn Twist, who is one of the women who founded The Hunger Project, who's raised billions of dollars for, for charity. And the reason that she inspires me is not because she's raised money, but because when I see her speak on stage, she's so powerfully in her heart she's so filled with compassion she always has tears in her eyes when she speaks because she's so passionate about what she's talking about so she inspires me and then i thought about Cass phelps this teacher of mine in los angeles who when i met him he is so beautiful not in just that he's got a nice face and a nice body but 
He just radiates beauty. He radiates health. I mean, you walk into a room with a thousand people, you will just not be able to take your eyes off him. Forget everyone else in the room. He looks like someone who's been living off superfoods and, and, and healthy, health conscious foods his whole life. He looks like someone who's deeply in touch with his body. He moves like a cat. I mean, he's just, he's alive. He's vibrant. He's just glow. His skin is moist and glowing. I mean, it's just, he looks, he virtually has a halo around him. He looks so good. <laughs> so I was thinking about these people who are so inspiring and I suddenly realized what my never ending motivation is. And it's very personal, but I'm going to share it with you because I want to put it out there. I want it to be witnessed by the world. Because that will help me stick to it. My never any motivation is I choose to be the most inspiring person I know. So if I'm going to be the most inspiring person I know, then I have to be wise, and I have to be compassionate, and I have to be in my heart, and I have to be funny, and I have to be able to hold a space for people to learn and grow. Because that's what all these people do that I admire. And I've just said my, my choice for my life is to be the most inspiring person I know. So I have to be at least as inspiring as those people. And if I include Cass in that group, and I've got to be at least as inspiring as him, then I need to be so vital and glowing with health that people look at me and they go, oh my God, I didn't know it was possible to look so healthy. I want to be like that and inspire people just by looking at me that they can go and clean up their act and improve their health and learn about superfoods and shed their body fat and get into shape. So for me, it's not about what I say or what I do or what I achieve in my life or what comes out of my mouth with words. For someone to be truly inspiring, they have to be inspiring the second you see them, the second you feel their energy, before they even say or do anything. And those four people that I mentioned are like that. I feel inspired before they open their mouth because I can feel that their energy, they're so clear, they're so self-loving, they're so self-respecting, and they're so passionate about what they do, and they're so healthy and vibrant that you just look at them and you feel inspired. You don't even know who they are or what they do. And that's what I'm choosing to be. I'm choosing to be the most inspiring person I know. Now that is motivating. It's like, does the most inspiring person I know sit and eat cake and chocolate when they're lonely? No. <laughs> does the most inspiring person I know cheat when they're doing a protocol like HCG? No. Does the most inspiring person I know go back and put all the weight back on afterwards because they haven't bothered to really deeply look at the issues in their life that cause them to eat? No. So that's motivating me. Now your never ending motivation may be something completely different. It may just be, I really choose to be healthy and glowing and full of energy for my children so I can pick them up and play with my grandchildren. You know, that's massive. That's a powerful inner motivation. Your inner motivation may be to do with your health, never getting sick, living a long life. Your inner motivation may be to do with your work. You know, you need to be fit and healthy for the work that you love. There's many other kinds of inner motivation. Go and look up Donna Kretsch and read her stuff. I know she's got many other examples. So I just wanted to share that with you because I haven't talked about it yet. And it's been such a driving force for this whole protocol for me. And I just have a feeling that it will be really, really helpful for some of you guys, particularly those of you who are struggling with cheating. If all you're motivated by is the idea of looking skinny, it's not very solid. It's not big enough to sustain you through 30 or 40 days of phase two. And through the three weeks of phase three and if you're doing more rounds five rounds six rounds you know the food can get really boring you need something really core and deep and powerful to motivate you otherwise you're just going to fall off the wagon so go and sit quietly close your eyes and feel into what really is motivating me what's under my urge to look slim what's under my urge to look pretty you know, what, what's under my urge to fit into my skinny clothing? What's underneath the urge to lose this weight? What's the real motivation here? And once you identify that, write it on the wall. Stick it on your mirror. You know, look at it every day. Remember that that's your motivation. Once you have that, you will be unshakable. I promise. So I hope you've enjoyed my two vlogs today. One was very practical. One was very esoteric and, and inspirational, hopefully. And I know I've talked for a long time. I'm a real talker. It's just the idea of doing a three-minute vlog. I don't know how people do it. I don't think it's possible for me. So you have to bear with me. <laughs> My vlogs are quite long, but hopefully they're entertaining. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in a couple of days when I do another vlog. Until then, have a beautiful week. I'll see you guys. Bye.